Hey guys, what's up? This time we're gonna talk about underwater navigation and we're gonna go through a couple main subjects, okay? We're gonna discuss a couple benefits of learning to navigate underwater. Then we're gonna learn to do distance estimation underwater. And then we're gonna discuss the two main natural ways, the two main ways of navigation, which is natural navigation and compass navigation. And finally, we're just gonna talk a little bit about the patterns when using the compass, okay? I'm not gonna go show you how to use a compass. I think that you can learn it better once you have it in your hands and you're with an instructor about to do the dive, uh, but I might do one of those later on. Right now, it's just about a little bit of theory on the navigation. Okay, so let's begin. Navigation underwater, you might uh, probably always, you will go with a dive guide, a dive instructor, and you notice how this person always knows where, where, where he or she is going and knows to go back to the boat or to the shore, okay? And what they are displaying is navigational skills. The benefits of navigation is that you don't waste air because you know where you're going. You avoid long surface swims because then you can just go underwater and begin enjoying the dive because you know where you're gonna uh, arrive. You learn the shortest route, okay? So the straight line and to the best place of the dive site. You avoid uh, certain areas or you can stay within area uh, that you want. And it reduces stress because you constantly know where you are, where you're going and where you're coming from, okay? Now, when you're uh, swimming, the, there's a various ways of knowing how long you've swam, uh, yeah, swimmed. Uh, so there's kick cycles, which is every time your leg kicks, it's a cycle, one, two, three, okay? So you count kick cycles. You can also count elapsed time. In combination, it works best. And there's also cylinder pressure. So if you stay at the same depth, you can uh, tell how much you've swam how much is the distance by the amount of air you have left in the tank, okay? The first kind of navigation there is, and is the one you're gonna be doing most often, is natural navigation. It's the one that I think is the most important. And there's three main points to it. Pre-dive observation, going down, descending, and then using natural references. Pre-dive observation includes water motion, waves, current, uh, tidal changes, okay? Sun direction and angle. So normally you see where the sun is coming from and you can say, okay, so if I have the sun on my left, when I go diving, there's gonna be shadows projected on the right. So if I wanna turn around and come back, I should have the shadows on the left, right? Then there's objects and formations. So before you go in the dive, you see a pinnacle, uh, a rock standing out. You know that if you go down, you can surround it or you can have it on your left. Or maybe you see a mountain that goes down underwater. You know that's the wall. So that's pre-dive observations. Then you have the descent. It's a short period, but you should begin facing the way you're gonna be diving. That way you'd avoid confusion. So if you're gonna be diving that way, just go down uh, facing in this direction. Finally, you have natural references. Once you are underwater and you start swimming, you wanna pay attention to details in your surroundings, lights and shadows. So where are the shadows going or the light is coming from? Water movement. So if you are diving with a current, you know that if you turn around, you have the current against you, you're coming back to where you started bottom composition so you have silt and then rocks also for example uh, normally in the ocean in the beach the sand will create these lines and these lines are parallel to the shore so if you are diving like uh, if you're diving perpendicular to the lines you are either going away from the shore or going towards the shore and then you can just check your depth and you and then you know if you're going or coming and if you're diving uh, parallel to the uh, shore you're also diving parallel to the sand ripples okay 
And finally, we have contours, plants, and animals. Animals like, for example, a particular, maybe a, a seahorse or a moray eel that you know will stay there when you're back, right? So then you can go and come back, you see the moray eel, you know you're on your way. And plants, you see a, a big coral, a particular brain coral or a fan coral that get really big, they're easy to notice, you can use it as well, okay? That's natural navigation, you'll use it most of the time because almost always you will go diving without a compass. But for your advanced course and for maybe search and recovery specialty, you will use a compass. You've used it in your open water diver course as well. And I'm just gonna give you a few pointers, a few pieces of advice when using the compass. First is trust the compass, okay? A lot of times when you're first beginning to use a compass, you're like, you turn around and, and you're like, I'm pretty sure it was that way and the compass is telling me it's that way. Most likely the compass is right and your sense of direction is off. So trust the compass. Combine it with natural references. So use the compass and at the same time, look around and see what's there to help you in your navigation. Practice on land, that's really important. Practice before you go on the boat. Grab the compass and do the pattern with your instructor or with your dive buddy. Do it before on land to practice and see how it feels. Uh, <clears throat> and then adjust for currents. If you're diving in a place where there's currents, know that if the current is going that way and you're going perpendicular to the current, you're gonna end up a little bit on one side. So take that in consideration when going and when coming back. Share tasks with your dive buddy. Okay, that's why we have dive buddies. If you have the compass, you can be in charge of navigation and your body can help you maintain the depth. That way you're not overloading yourself with tasks. <clears throat> the patterns, okay? Obviously you could use a compass randomly, but if you have a pattern in mind, a square, a triangle, or uh, just a line back and forth, if you visualize this, it's better. So have a pattern that you will use. And then <clears throat> go around obstacles. If there's a huge rock or something, just remember your heading. Remember the number, the degrees you're going, 180 north, okay? And then go around and come back and say, okay, 180 north and just keep going. Like ants, like when ants are walking around a little thing. And finally, well, not finally, intentional error. So. Even if you're the best underwater navigator in the world, if you swim 100 meters with a compass, you won't arrive at this exact specific location. So know that you're gonna go a little bit off, a few feet on the either side. So have an intentional error. So say, I'm gonna go a little bit to the right. That way when you arrive, you know it's not gonna be exactly there, but you know it's gonna be a little bit to the left. So you know where to look. And understand the purpose, which is that it's not a GPS you're not gonna arrive to the point. So what's the purpose of the compass? Is to give you a general direction of where you need to go. So it's okay if you're a few meters, a few feet away. And remember the prior priorities, which is dive safely, be well functioning. So buoyancy goes first, your air goes first, your dive body goes, goes first, communicate goes first, and then Navigation. So you cannot navigate if your buoyancy is all over the place, if you don't know where your dive body is. So prioritize. Okay. Finally, you're going to end up doing some patterns in your advanced course. So discuss it first with your dive body, with your instructor. Which is the pattern, pattern you want me to make? How many meters or feet you want me to, to swim? How many kick cycles for how long? Okay. And then visualize it in your head. In your mind's eye, visualize the square or the triangle that you are going to make. Really see it first, it works. It sounds like a little uh, goo-goo thing, but it's, it's real, it works. And make the pattern small, don't go 100 meters, make it 10, 5, 8 meters, and go slowly. Go slowly, the compass adjusts slowly, so follow the compass, wait for the compass to adjust, okay? In general, the navigational uh, dive in the adventure dive in the advanced is gonna be the one with that's gonna require the most effort from you in terms of swimming a lot, going and coming. 
but it's a, if you pay attention, it's a rewarding experience and it will help you know your way better. And these little tips will help you to find your way underwater and know where you're going, where you're coming from, where you're at, okay? That's navigation in a very, very basic terms. I hope it helps. If you'd like me to do a little how to use the compass thing, let me know. I'll do it for you. And that's it for now, okay? Hope to see you soon. Stay safe, stay relaxed. See you underwater. Have a good one.